Hey guys, uh, today I got a video about the different construction methods used in 9 volt batteries. Now, I have three different brands. I've got an Energizer, a Duracell, and a Rayovac battery here. So, anyhow, let me start off um, price wise on these things. For four packs, I went on uh, Walmart.com because that seems like a place where you'd buy batteries is Walmart. So, anyway, I went on Walmart.com. I looked up 9 volt batteries and I found four packs of each type of battery. Um, so for a four pack of Energizers, that'll cost you eleven dollars and ninety seven cents. For a four pack of Duracells, cost you eleven dollars and ninety seven cents. At least they are the same price. But for a four pack of Rayovac, that will only cost you uh, nine dollars and ninety seven cents. So this is a, for a four pack. These are a good uh, two dollars cheaper, which would be what. Uh, 50 cents cheaper per battery or something like that so anyway I'll put the price up for individual batteries uh, in the video here I'll edit that in but what I'm interested in is what are the different construction techniques used inside these batteries now uh, it used to be a trend going along around uh, people would tear these things open and you'd get uh, these quadruple-A batteries, which are almost completely useless. Um, I guess in a pinch, you, you might be able to shove them into uh, uh, something that takes triple-A's, but they don't really work for your kid for anything else. And there's probably a few rare devices that actually do take quadruple-A batteries, but uh, we're going to see if every single one of these actually has the quadruple-A batteries, and if so, how they're actually set up. So... Anyway, we'll start with the Energizer here. Um, personally, I do prefer Energizer batteries over the other two. Uh, Rayovac I particularly dislike, uh, simply because I've had a lot of them leak. Uh, not just 9 volts, but all batteries in general, double A's, triple A's, all that stuff. So, go ahead and tear these open. Now, to me, the most useful part of tearing apart 9-volt batteries is actually using the uh, these tops as battery connectors. So, anyway, I'll go ahead and peel this top part off and see if we can get them out. I can already see those uh, quadruple eight batteries in there. That's already kind of wanting to fall apart, too. So, there we go. Let's see if I can just push this out of here now or not. There we go, and we got the little cap on the end. So, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's just an empty metal casing here. Uh, then you have your six quadruple A battery cells that people seem to think are kind of useful. But, anyway, these are all just loose cells as you can see. And then on the, uh, this is the bottom pieces on the battery there. You can see those actually just have contacts in order to wire all these in series. So that's actually fairly simple, and the top part's going to be about the same way. And that transfers power onto the actual battery snap. So this whole thing's just uh, press fit together. There's nothing actually soldered or uh, spot welded or anything like that. So. Anyway, we'll uh, push that off to the side, and we'll take a look at a Duracell battery here. See if I can get this thing out of here. Okay. So again, empty casing. And this one is actually a little bit different. As you can see, these uh, cells are actually like uh, shrink wrapped with plastic there. This end piece is just a piece of plastic. There's nothing on that. So anyhow, let's go ahead and cut that plastic off of there. Let's see 
see what's under this. Okay, so that is a little bit different again. Um, so anyway, these ones are actually soldered together, or uh, spot welded, I suppose that is, not technically soldered. But uh, So really, I kind of like the way that the Duracell has been constructed, just because it's soldered together. It's got the nice uh, shrink wrap plastic around the battery cells, uh, versus just kind of having them shoved in there. I kind of like this a little bit better, so set that off to the side, and we will open up the Rayovac. See if I can push this out of here. And now you can see our little quadruple A's are gone skis. So, <laughs> well, this is completely different. So, uh, you can see they're like uh, the actual alkaline battery cells. Uh, they're encased in a plastic uh, covering here, so it's not really going to hurt you if you do open one of these. But uh, then those are just soldered onto the contacts in there so <laughs> kind of see why this is cheaper and uh, people have tested out different brands of batteries online as uh, you see that quite a bit actually uh, but these are always a little bit lower um, it's just the way that they're constructed I guess um, they are cheaper they're certainly cheaper so anyway just to uh, recap this stuff We've got the Rayovac battery here, and this is the uh, bottom piece of it. This is the Energizer, which basically just came apart. Energizer, as well as the bottom piece, and they went through the trouble even to shove a piece of cardboard onto that, I believe. That's where that one came from, but anyway, I particularly like the Duracell one just simply because it's uh, they're actually spot welded together uh, all these battery cells so anyway obviously I'm going to tell you that the worst out of these batteries is probably going to be this one uh, just because of the way it's constructed it's really cheap uh, I mean it works it, it, it works as a battery it's, uh, it doesn't quite have the capacity of the other ones uh, but it is cheaper and these probably do have a higher tendency to leak yeah, but I'm not real sure about that I don't usually have 9 volts leak on me so anyway and if you actually are in a pinch and you need to get the quadruple A cells definitely the easiest way to get those is through uh, the Energizer batteries here I mean you can get them out of the Duracell too but you have to cut these apart uh, so anyhow, hope you enjoyed the little video about uh, how these 9 volts are constructed. Uh, so see you next time, guys. Bye.